What up guys, Justin Allman here. So, maybe you took up flare bartending, maybe you wanna take up flare bartending, but you just need some direction. Because if you're like me, you're uh, from a small town, I was the only one in a 25 mile radius that was even interested in flare, that started flare bartending. And back then YouTube wasn't really so much of an abundant, and I kinda had to figure things out along on the way. So. I'm making this video today to help get you guys started, get you guys pointed in the right direction, and give you guys a few tips. So, getting started. The first thing you need to do is get a practice area, get a bar. So, building a bar is actually really easy. This uh, bar you see right here is actually my childhood dresser. It's the dresser my parents bought for me when I was like a little, little kid. And... I just held on to it, turned it into my first flare bar, and it's been going with me ever since. Um, the good things about using dressers is it's cheap, it's abundant. My dresser in the garage that I turned into a bar, I got at Goodwill for like five bucks or something like that. There's literally no work to it. Just some key points that you need to do when you're uh, building a bar out of a dresser is Whatever bar you're working at, you should try to get it about the same height as the bar that you may be working at. So um, most bars come up to about, you know, depending on your height, belly button height or whatnot. So like this one's a little shorter for most bars, but you know, it's really convenient for me as you can see. Most of my bars I work at come up to my belly button. I'm six foot, so. The cool thing you can see here is um, when you pull out like the second or third drawer from the bottom, it comes out to about the same height as your well would be if you were at work. And it holds about the same amount of bottles. Six bottles in the front, six bottles in the rear if you have a double rail. And then the bar top itself sits up about the same height as a bar top. Now with this... I don't know where you live, what bar you work at, but it should be pretty easy for you guys to obtain like bar mats, um, garnishing trays, that's it, garnishing trays. Shaker tins you could get online at barproducts.com. You could even go to your local uh, restaurant supply store and get them. I prefer the bar products ones just because they're all pretty much weighted the same. Um, when you go to a restaurant supply store, yeah, they will be cheaper, but some might be 28 ounce tin, some might be 30. I've even came across a couple of 32s. They might be fatter or thicker at the top or skinnier and lankier. So when you learn to practice and you start getting really good, it's really hard to maintain the same consistencies, especially if you're flipping two tins in one ball. That's just me though. I'm sure there's guys out there that are twice as good as me that don't have that problem. Another thing too, shaker tins. It does not matter what shaker tin you have. I know Meg from Carnival Court, he uses non-weighted shaker tins. I played with them around for a little bit. I liked it, but I just like that extra weight. Most flare bartenders do, but you know, it just comes down to personal preference. So this is my second practice station that I have in my garage that I love coming down here because I don't have to worry about breaking anything, dropping anything. If, all I have to worry about is getting my motorcycle outside and I'm good to practice. Everything else, you know, I can really blare the music out here. I can practice with full bottles and I don't have to worry about spilling and getting all over my carpet. I can work on new tricks, tricks that I'm not as confident with that I'm going to be dropping and making havoc with as opposed to like my indoor practice station. I usually stick with things that I can do and just kind of go through a routine that I'm comfortable with or done a hundred times and... I know I'm not going to be dropping, and if I fumble, it's not going to be too crazy. So, I wanted to talk about bottles. Depending on what state you live in, there's two different type size bottles. You have liters and 750 mils. Now, some bars, like flare bars, will use the 750 mils. These are all 750 mil bottles. But... If you bartend in, like, I know it was uh, Washington State, they had the bigger bottles, I think California, but Oregon had nothing but 750s where I was from. So I was really lucky because these are more flare bartending friendly as opposed to these ones. These ones you can still do it with, but there's just a couple of different tricks that you can't really um, stick as well. And they're just heavier when they're full and whatnot, but... 
Try to practice if you can with the 750s. If you can't get your hands on any 750s, I don't know what to tell you other than go to barproducts.com and order a couple of the practice bottles. Um, these are cheap. They're like 16 bucks. So this thing's like seven or eight years old. When I lived in Oregon, I bought this one because they, I didn't have any liter bottles and I wanted to practice with, and I've truthfully never used it. Um, all the bottles that I have here are 750s. I've gotten these from work. The differences and tricks that you can do with 750s as opposed to the liter bottles is snatches are just resting it in the tin. With the smaller bottle, it's obviously easier. It's going to go in a lot easier as opposed to the big bottle. This is a 28 ounce tin. It's just very difficult to try to get it to work. So if you're going to do any type of snatch moves, grill bottles are just a lot more friendly. They go in easier, they don't get stuck. Sometimes those plastic bottles like to get stuck on you. And I'll be practicing with these ones, you know, learning new tricks. And I'll tell that it's stuck, so I'll have to give it a tap to get it to come up before I can go into my next routine or next trick. Maybe you can't build a bar right now. Maybe you can't go to uh, a Goodwill or pick something up because you're unemployed right now with this whole COVID-19 pandemic that we got going on. And you just need a place to practice. Well, it's as simple as just finding an area. Um, you can go to a park and practice. You could go out in your front yard. Like here, I live in a condo. I have a nice little grassy area right outside. I could go practice. You know, just to get started, you don't have to go anything crazy. What I used to do before I actually found out that they sold practice bottles, um, I'll actually, put, if I can, put a link below uh, to barproducts.com with bar, uh, plastic bottles that you can order. Um, but what I used to actually do before that was I would take a bottle like this and I would wrap it up in duct tape. That way, if it did break, I didn't have to pick up as much glass. It was just already together. I'd pick up a broken, disgusting bottle wrapped in duct tape and then I'd sweep up what little glass I have. So if that's an option for you right now, that's something you can do until you get a practice bottle. Um, I prefer practicing with real bottles just because I like working flare and I like to train how I would at the bar. I practice at home, perform at work. That's very important. You want to practice at home and perform at work. Now, maybe you have a few customers or something like that that they kind of want to show you something and your manager's cool or the owner's cool with you, you know, doing that, that's fine. But, you know, ultimately just practice it home and perform at work it's just so much better you know just yeah <laughs> or even another good thing that you can do like if you like me when I first moved here I lived in a, a studio apartment on the third floor so what I was doing to practice was I was actually practicing over my bed that way if I dropped a bottle it didn't bang down on the ground I wasn't disturbing my neighbors pissing them off this and that and I would just do that you know you just make it work it's kind of fun you know you just get kind of creative with it so with getting started with flare you just have to start everything it's gonna be so difficult at first when you first try it because oh hi cody hey baby <laughs> it's gonna be so difficult at first when you first try it because everything is gonna be new you're gonna be moving and altering your body and manipulating your anatomy behind your head in full ways that's just new and alien to you you know you're even gonna have to worry about mobility in your shoulders like i did you know i didn't it's kind of stiff from my shoulders from sports or working out or whatever it was but um ultimately you just gotta pick a drill and start practicing just start practicing everything and the more you do something the more easy it comes like i got routines in my head where like i do this routine and when i want to switch to another routine it's just when i do that one trick i automatically just without thinking muscle memory go into another trick so when i'm have to learning a new routine it's actually not fluent because i'm actually stalling and having to think about my next move rather than just going through what i've done over and over so you just get a drill um Start simple, start with the basics, and just 
drill over those basics and those moves and build a really good solid foundation. Because if you get a really, really good solid foundation and you start stacking on top of that, it'll transition into other moves. You'll pick up moves like that without even trying because you just already have a good solid foundation. And even me today, that's what this bar set up here for right now. While I'm cooking or just passing by it, I pick it up and I just do a couple of simple little basic moves. It keeps up on your hand-eye coordination. It's a lot like staying in shape, you know. It just The moves seem a lot more fluent, like if you practice a few times a day as opposed to like one hour. I like to span it out and throw it around, this and that. But, you know, working on those uh, basic moves is just a really good way to just stay consistent, stay fluent, plus the performing that you're doing at work, so... So, final thoughts. One thing I cannot stress about enough is please practice at home and perform at work. I was floor bartending for about three months of daily practice. I was practicing for about half hour, 45 minutes to an hour a day, and I was doing it for about three months, and I got a really good solid foundation in the basics, and I started flare bartending at work. So practice at home, perform at work. I know you're probably excited, and you got moves that you want to show your uh, customers and whatnot, and you can do that. There's a lot of simple, really easy moves that you can do, but just keep it very basic. You know, you don't want to be pissing off your manager. You don't want to be pissing off your owner. You don't want to be pissing off customers by breaking glasses, spilling things on them. Breaks happen. They just do happen. It doesn't matter how good you are, how, what happens, you know, it just, it happens. I've had a couple of several breaks that were just freak accidents, simple moves, just it happens. So um, if that does happen, though, just be extremely, you know, genuinely apologetic, you know, show gratitude, you know, don't be embarrassed because, you know, it does happen. Half the time, if you do break, people kind of like it funny enough but yeah just you know apologize offer to get them a drink or replace their drink or whatever you can you know but the main thing is is you just don't want to give flare bartending a bad name you know um flare bartending sometimes with certain bartenders in certain bars just has a bad taste has a bad name almost like sport bike riders or base jumpers or whatever it is you know so you know you just want to be good to the community be entertaining show off your skills and be confident when you do it because that's the main thing like when i know a move is good to go behind the bar is when i feel like it's not impressive when it's boring like it's like oh this is lame that's when it's actually good to take it behind the bar because that means you've mastered it like if you're going to put a move behind the bar make sure that you can do it 50 times in a row and if you could do it 50 times in a row two three times and like a 50 uh and a set of 50s then you could probably take it behind the bar because sometimes you're going to be nervous. You know, people pull out their phones and they're like, hey, guess what? And you're like, oh, crap. Or maybe you've been sitting in a slow bar for a while and you're just kind of like, oh, man, today, you know, oh, slow. And then all of a sudden somebody shows up and they're like, hey, dude, show me that move you did last week. And you're like, oh, man. I mean, floor bartending, you need to warm up. It's very important to warm up. It's almost like foreplay, like for you and your customer. You know, you got to be like... Yeah, baby, get in the move, get in that groove. Be like, yeah, you like that? You know. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> you you just need to warm up in, before you can, like, start doing flare. And also, some days you're going to have good flare days, and some days you're just not going to be able to land anything. And that's just the way it is. That's the way it is with any sport, unfortunately. Some days are just better than others. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I really hope you learned something. I hope there was good information out there for you guys to get started and whatnot and, you know, answer some questions that a lot of newbie flare bartenders might be having. Um, I'm going to put a couple of links in the description for shaker tins in case you guys want to get the bar products ones or you don't have a restaurant supply store near you. And also for uh, practice bottles because those are a good investment to get your hands on. Um, there's a bunch of videos on uh, YouTube now, you know, where you can, um, from really good, well-named flare bartenders that teach tricks, this and that. Um, if you can find it, the Christian Delpesh Working Flare Series is a really good foundation to start on. Um, I think it's on YouTube now. I bought the videos, but I don't know if it's still going to be on YouTube because, you know, obviously I don't know what this copyright is on all that stuff so 
But yeah, if you like this video, give me a like. Um, also, consider subscribing because I'm going to come out with a lot more uh, how-to videos for beginners and flare bartending and um, tricks and tips and the differences between working flare and competition flare, exhibition flare. Um, simple tricks, drills that you can work on, and just all around anything that has to do with flare bartending so i mean if it's something that you're into and you want to get into and you want to follow me please consider subscribing and uh, help support the channel um yeah, that's all i got so thank you so much